Mexico's presidential candidates disagree on many things, but they are all united on one point. They want to ship as many people as they can to this country illegally. During a recent debate in Tijuana, the border city across from San Diego, all four Mexican presidential candidates said if elected, they would assist Central American migrants traveling to the U.S. illegally through Mexico. Enrique Acevedo is a news anchor for Univision, a frequent guest on the show, and he joins us again tonight. Enrique, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Great to be here, Tucker. So this is, among other things, and the other things would include a criminal conspiracy to subvert American law, an act of hostility aimed directly at our national interest by all four of the potential future presidents of Mexico. Why should we not consider Mexico an enemy in light of this? Well, candidates say a lot of things when they're campaigning President Trump, for example, said he was going to build the wall in the border and Mexico was going to pay for it 17 months into his presidency. We know that's never going to happen. I thought the candidates in Mexico showed the willingness to cooperate with the U.S. on issues like immigration and border security. We're already well, doing that. Because you make, doing a, that. you make an interesting point, I'm just gonna, and I'll let you finish in just a second, but let me just suggest the difference between the two pledges. The president pledged to build a wall on American soil with American tax dollars. He did not not propose forcing Mexico to pay at gunpoint, he said, I will convince him to pay. I don't think he will. But he did not suggest breaking Mexican law. He did not suggest subverting Mexican national security. He did not, in effect, declare war on Mexico. All four Mexican presidential candidates just did that. So why should we not consider Mexico a hostile foreign power? Like, like I was saying, I, I thought the candidates showed the willingness to cooperate with the U.S. on issues like immigration and border security. Both countries are already doing that. The problem is when you have cabinet members traveling to Mexico, like Secretary Nielsen or Secretary Mattis, to uh, gloat about the cooperation, to sign agreements left and right, and then two hours later, President Trump tweets that Mexico is not doing anything for us. No, but I'm, I'm sorry. You, frustration, I, you, and then, I don't you know, know the if you heard my are point. Tremendous right. pressure. I, I understand. It's a, it's a rocky relationship, and, and both sides are at fault for that, and I understand. This is something very different from what we've seen before. All four men running for the presidency of Mexico are pledging to intentionally break American federal immigration law and help flood our country with people we don't want here to our detriment. That, that's never happened before. No one's ever said that out loud before. All four of them just said that. Why shouldn't we pause and reassess our relationship with Mexico on the basis of that? Well, it should make us pause about how President Trump is unfairly criticizing Mexico, and this is why. The oh. candidates were referring to the <laughs> fact that right now, since, president, since uh, Trump became president, Mexico has arrested and deported over 200,000 immigrants. 200,000 immigrants. Still, President Trump insists that Mexico is not doing anything to help the U.S. No, on you issues mean, like I'm sorry, for the fifth time. Security. They so just the yesterday say, said they were going to be unfairly criticized. We might as well not do anything and let those 200,000 immigrants just go through Mexico. Really? So what would happen if the United States, which it could do in one day with an order from the president to the Department of Treasury, stopped all remittances from Mexican citizens working here and floating the damaged, corrupt Mexican economy with American dollars? What would happen to Mexico? Oh, it would collapse, actually. So the truth is, without illegal immigration in the United States, Mexican happen. leaders who are mostly rich get to ignore the social problems of Mexico and dis and transfer them to the backs of American taxpayers. So actually, we're doing Mexico a massive favor here. Well, and to give us the finger like this, why should we put up with that? Like you said, they're not referring to Mexican immigrants. They're referring to Central American immigrants coming through Mexico. And Mexico, through cooperation and agreements like the ones uh, that Secretary Nielsen and Secretary Mattis glow about, and the ones that President Trump undermines, through that cooperation, Mexico is stopping hundreds of thousands of those immigrants. So your Central position America. is... So what Mexico is saying, why should we keep cooperating with the U.S. if we're going to be unfairly criticized? Oh, and I think that's so, a valid so how position. would you feel, how would Mexico, how would you feel as a journalist if in this next round of presidential elections in the United States, all the candidates said, you know, we're going to take our poor people and we're going to send them to Mexico. We're going to help them get into Mexico and go on welfare there. Would you well, see that as a provocative threat? That's a, or would that's you an blame Mexico for that as you right, are blaming the United States? That's an excellent question, Tucker. Yes, it is. It's a, from you. minute one in the campaign, we heard President Trump refer to Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals. We heard President Trump talk about a wall. No. We heard repeated criticism on oh, first so, criticism about Mexico and 
unfounded criticism about Mexico. While we're neighbors and a strategic partners and allies, we're strategic allies, partners. We heard Are you that through all, throughout the we campaign. We float the kleptocracy of Mexico through our benevolence, and you're testing it. So, like, this is not a peer relationship at all. Mexico is a corrupt country run by a tiny oligarchy of blonde people for their own benefit, and Mexico we make that possible. Mexico has corrupt politicians, like the U.S. does, too. Mexico has corrupt politicians, but you know, it's not a corrupt country. It's a great country, and I think then why are people candidates fleeing are also running on, Mexi on making Mexico great again, just like Trump promised Americans. You don't give an inch, I have to say. I'll let That's our right. viewers decide. Thank you, That's Enrique. Right. Good to see you. Thank you, Tucker.